The snow glows wide on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation. It looks like I'm the king. The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I tried. Now watch as Elsa Bloodstone lets it go in PvP. Alright everyone, welcome to my Elsa Bloodstone video. Oh, and what is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745. I'm excited because it's finally time to take a look at Elsa in PvP. Now in case you were wondering, we won that battle against Rocket and Spider-Man Noir, but Elsa died valiantly. In this video though, we're going to show you three completely different matches and three different team-ups for Elsa Bloodstone. We'll begin with Iron Fist. Iron Fist is a fantastic team-up for any hero in the game. He's going to give you Prevent Debuffs, Combo Breaker, Combo Breaker. Hills, Stamina Recharge, and of course, Rising Up. Rising Up comes courtesy of his Ferric Aiso from Season 2, Chapter 6, Mission 3, and it causes Healing Chi and Praying Lotus to grant Rising Up. The main thing that we're going to work with involving Elsa, at least for the first two team-ups, is going to be her Finest Hour Level 9 attack. But don't you get it twisted, she's good all around. First of all, we're going to have access to Tea Time, a quick action subtle debuff that applies Hunter's Mark to the enemy, and also grants her Rising Up. Now we know why she wants Rising Up, but she wants Hunter's Mark on her enemy because of her passive Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter says, all actions of an enemy with Hunter's Mark are counterattacked with Hunter's Shot. Hunter's Shot causes bleeding and pain to the target, and applies rising up to Elsa Bloodstone. So yeah, in short, it's awesome. Then we also have Thorns on her level 1, so we can exhaust the Amazing Spider-Girl and get a Thorns buff on Elsa. Or, we've applied Hexing A-Iso to her level 6. That means her Blazing Boomstick now has Soul Fire, Despair, and Hexed. Those are all really solid debuffs, especially what it comes with, Soul Fire and Despair. Remember, Soul Fire causes the enemy to take magic damage every turn, but it also removes beneficial status effects when applied. Plus it counts as burning. Then as far as Despair, it removes and prevents resurrection effects, and it prevents most healing. So, sorry Iron Fist, but you're out of luck. Ours, on the other hand, is going to be healing us and prevent debuffs. Theirs, well, he fails in trying to heal Galactus because of despair. So it looks like the Devourer of Worlds is on his way out. First, we'll just use the Smothering Shadow, and that's going to give the Amazing Spider-Girl an extra attack. So I wish she was exhausted, but hey, that despair was the right move. Because of her taking extra attacks, we're going to try to knock her out right now. Unfortunately, she's going to dodge it. Well, at least we have Prevent Debuff, so she's not going to go ahead and web us, causing us not to attack. After that, with Elsa, we're going to use her Grave Digger. This quick action not only does damage, it has Near Fatal. So if it hits, that debuff will be on the opponent where they'll die as soon as they get to 20% or less. Of course it misses. But we'll use the Slayer on Amazing Spider-Girl, and there you see that incredible damage. Plus, the Agent dies the dots anyway. So with only the enemy Iron Fist remaining, we'll go ahead and work on him, and it shouldn't be too long. Then we're going to have another really strong team-up for you, involving Finest Hour, and a lot of Rising Up buffs. So yeah, you may be able to guess it, we're going to be using her with Heimdall. There's really no better place to get all those Rising Up buffs than with this guy. Okay, well the enemy has a jump starter, I don't even know what that does. But his own teammate dodged it. That's pretty peculiar. Okay, I looked it up for you guys. The jump starter is a free action, and it applies Energize, so restores stamina to all party members when used. It's never bad to have a free action in your build, but uh, the AI really didn't use that very well. Anyways though, with Elsa, we're going to use Tea Time on Enchantress. I'm thinking this should work out to our advantage. After that, we're going to use our level 1 on the enemy agent. That's in part because he's going to protect anyways, and also we need to exhaust him. 
I hate when agents do more than one thing in a turn, so we're just gonna stop it. We also got a follow up from the Relentless Rapier, so we'll take it. After that, Gamora is gonna use a Mortal Strike, but it will miss. And for that attack, we're going to absorb energy. Next, as a free action, I'll use the Smoldering Shadow from the Lantern of Doom. And then following that, we're most likely going to attack with a single target hit. So, the Relentless Rapier is our option. Now, this is the turn I was waiting for. First of all, Enchantress takes quite a bit of damage over time. Then she's going to use Alluring Voice, followed by Charm. Nothing happens yet, but after she uses Magic Missiles, she takes a big Hunter Shot hit. That's what I like to see. After she fires it again, she is going to end up getting hit, so she's almost dead already. After that, with her Heimdall, we'll use his level 2 and his level 9. So that's going to be it for his turn. Now the Namekian Agent is going to take dot damage, and then he's affected by Cower. This is incredible news because we can use the Gravedigger on him, and that puts him very close to death. Then, we can fire our level 9 on Gamora. By the end of this, their whole team should be basically done for. So there's our initial hit, and the follow-up, plus collateral damage. Pretty impressive, I have to say. So with our agent at near fatal, and going to die anyways, I figure we'll help him along with the Oni Breaker. And that's it, that's Heimdall and Elsa. A very formidable team. Now for her last team up, we of course had to use Angela. There have been conflicting reports about this team up, but we're going to go ahead and lay it to rest. Alright, well first of all, their agent goes on forever, and he has a ton of stuff that I hate. Mainly the scroll. So following that, we have changed our setup slightly, we have the Neurotrope and the Uter Pendragon. Despite our concerns, we use the Neurotrope first. After that, we're going to use the Blackest Void on the enemy team. Then Emma Frost, who of course is an infiltrator, is going to be up next. She uses Quick Reflexes and Psychic Tap. That means with Elsa, we do have Mental Anguish. We'll begin by using Tea Time back on Emma, and then we're going to pass our turn. Alright, so far okay, not good, but at least Sandman does try to hit his own agent. Now on Angela's turn, we'll use Close the Gap because we do have her at level 15. Then we'll use her quick action Battle Cry, and we'll begin with her level 2. It doesn't really matter, she's going to follow up with her level 1, and I believe Sandman's going to protect. But that's fine. Her level 1 basically has a mark, by the way. Mark of the Huntress. So it is important that we get that. But she does it, of course, as her follow-up attack. Then right off the bat, you see a hunter shot. So Elsa does hit Sandman with the hunter shot after he attacks. And that was just a counterattack, so I was very impressed. Then the enemy agent's going to give both of his teammates an immediate turn. And after a hammering blow... We get our Hunter's Shot and a counterattack. The counter comes from the Neurotrope, by the way. And if he wasn't immune to bleeding, that would have been even more damage. Next, with my agent, I debated using the Light Fantastic, but we still have Manipulated. So I'm going to attack with the Uter Pendragon instead. If you pause the screen at the right time, you can only see the Mark of the Huntress on Sandman, but he was still taking the Hunter's Shot. What that tells me is this team can definitely work together. We still have our regular Hunter's Mark on Emma, and so Elsa's going to blast her with the Hunter Shot as well. Not for that psychic attack though. So next, she does have Hunter's Mark, there it is. And because of that, we're going to use Gravedigger on the enemy agent. It applies near fatal and does some damage, so I figured why not. It actually does nice damage, triggers collateral damage as well. And because of thorns, he's going to take some bleeds. Anyways though, now it's time for the Slayer. And that immediately drops him, well, with that follow-up. It's all the same move. Then with Angela, we'll use her level 9 Blood Angel on Emma Frost. And that's it, that's the end of our first look at Elsa in PvP. 
Like I said, this team is definitely usable, very fun to use in fact, and I recommend all three that we saw in this video. Lastly, I hope you all enjoyed it, I want to thank you all for watching, and then ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, good luck, and take care.